stuck in the bell. Door, hatchet closed. Take us up on the wind. Europe's ancient floodgate, primeval path of a great river, endlessly pumping its tons of water towards the top of the world. Not a big sea, nor a deep sea, but secretive, unquiet, muttering mutiny. Northwards, open to the Arctic winds. East. But Europe's industry has a growing hunger for energy. They found it on Scotland's doorstep. Oil, 8,000 feet beneath the seabed. But the problem was the 400 feet above it. The answer, to build steel towers. Then to construct working platforms from which to drill. That was the plan. This is the place. The North Sea, neither Arctic nor Atlantic, but dragged along in their perpetual quarrel. A tilt yard where the big winds and deep depressions jostle and joust. stand and fight against shock of storm, against the long corrosive siege of salt. Nothing must break, nor even bend. To win the battle, they must use weapons the sea does not possess. Scale of imagination, of patience, scale of initiative, scale of investment, of risk. And the scale of size forced on them by the forces of nature. How will it, in turn, affect nature's more delicate face? Scotland, with less than a tenth of Britain's people, but a lion's share of her beauty. story, the fragility of nature and the tramp of man.
landscapes must not be made to bend and buckle. Somehow they must build both well and wisely, caring equally for the land and the unspoiled waters of this fish-rich coast. From Block 2110, an undersea pipeline will carry the oil to shore. The problem is to get it to the refinery on the Firth of Forth. What route to choose across a country as special as Scotland? So they walk the countryside. Walk it and talk it over with the local people. Proposing, discussing, reconsidering, starting again. Seeking a thread through the green tartan of Scotland's farmland. Painstakingly moving from words to paper. And one day, moving from paper to steel. miles of it. Pipe for the sea line, another 110 miles. When finished, it'll take 50 million gallons just to fill the line. Cruden Bay, near Aberdeen, the closest landfall to the 40s. The start of the sea line. Working towards the beach, the land line approaches the rendezvous where the two pipelines will become one. is underway. But the drilling platforms themselves are the heart of the project. Giants who will sleep on their sides in great dry docks. Their beds the huge hollow rafts on which they will one day be floated away. Perhaps the biggest raft ever built. These buoyancy tanks must soon lift and carry 20,000 tons out into the North Sea. of this two-faced sea. The fog means calm. And each calm day, the lay bar. Each time a joint is complete, the bridge signals and the barge will winch forward on her anchors. factory, turning lengths of pipe into a pipeline. Except that here the factory moves, the pipe stands still. The stinger is in the barge's tail, a sloping ramp supporting the pipe's weight and controlling its descent. For no pipe this big has yet been laid in water this deep. They are being dwarfed by what they make, tiny in the treetops of their own technology, small in this steel spinning of their own shaping. 
huge feet with guides for piles to pin them to the seabed. as on a forest floor. High above are the boughs which must never break. And higher still, steel branches to support the drilling platforms. The farmlands of Strathmore, where the diggers' teeth bite on soft soil. Soil first to come out, carefully put aside, then last to go back. Six feet deep, three feet of pipeline, three of earth to cover it. pagan procession, burial of snake god, bound with ritual wrappings. Pipeline 2 is buried. The submarine's final check in the foggy twilight of a Jules Verne world. Pipeline nearing completion. Platforms nearly finished. Over. Ready to launch. Not by putting the rafts onto water, but by putting water under the rafts. and side, as each in its turn is completed, the great platforms on their rafts are towed out into the North Sea. The raft is a ferry to carry the platform to its location. But it has another function. On arrival, the rear tanks will be flooded in a carefully controlled sequence, so tilting the platform into the vertical and lowering it to the seabed. The challenge is to make 30,000 tons of steel do the same. Out on block 2110, the fleet of crane barges and support craft await the platform's arrival. The smallest ship is the flagship. Its control room of brain a complex radio link with the valves which will flood the raft. Steel acorn, 
where they must now plant steel oak. With the fingertips of space technology, we must guide and maneuver this vast craft to a precise and gentle touchdown on the seabed. Control, control, this is our producer coming, control. This is control, go ahead, officer. Uh, we are ready to, uh, to crash flat if you got all your uh, tugs and uh, dives on this position. Uh, what is the condition there, over? safely on the seabed. Now its raft can be released. The Meteorological Office has used the following gale warning at 1300 hours GMT. Sea area 40. The North Sea. Lion dressed as lamb. Now he turns and roars. They were ready and geared to go. Now they wait. The boredom waits. The banks wait. Up here, the wind is managing director. The sea is chairman. stands firm as they knew it would. But while storms like this are in the area, the waiting must go on. Now the pipeline lies beneath these furrows. The surgery is over and the stitches are removed. Nature herself, with a little help, will heal the scar. Near the fourth rail bridge, landmark to Scotland's engineering past, they are building another to her industrial present, a marine terminal for the onward shipment of Fortis oil. This is the end of the pipeline. 250 miles northeast, the other end. And the sea has relented. Now top onto tower, platform onto legs, inch by inch, Space modules never dock more delicately.
a calm morning, the North Sea's ironic smile. For now there is a platform. However high the sea, however strong the wind, however dense the fog, there is a solid base from which to drill. The four platforms at block 2110. Each will drill down to the oil below. Not one, but drilling slantwise, 27 wells. 108 in all. For three years, as if from some great rostrum, they have conducted this vast orchestra of men and machines, skills and processes, training hundreds of men, pouring time and talent, money and effort, into the single aim of getting oil from beneath the North Sea. Now, at last, drilling, probing down towards what they know is there. This installation, beamed on Block 21, is the master switch for the 40s. From here, they can listen and be heard through whatever weather the North Sea sends. Now the command is given, the order is passed for the oil to flow. Under the sea, under the beach, under the land, southeastwards toward the distant refinery. useful and versatile power source known. It is the yeast in the brew of our time. The verb in the sentence which will sum up our age. These crumbs from the breakfast table of geological time. This gallon of crude oil from our doorstep. In a sense, we cross the world for it. the challenge to seek it. The forties is not our final destination. It is our beacon, our signpost. <laughs> 